Here I am. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, wherever you might be around this great big world of ours. I'm Kate Richberg, and it's time for Creative Connections with Kate. Sorry, I was a little uh, tardy this morning. Um, because I had to restart our computer. So let me know if you can see me uh, over here on YouTube and on Facebook. Just give me a shout out and a hello um, just to uh, make sure that I can see all of you all. There we go. I see, I see Donna Harrison said hello there. There we go. I can see people now. That's great. So sorry again. I had a little bit of a slower start this morning. I thought I had everything all set up, but of course the best intentions always go awry. The computer was not, um, uh, cooperating so it always makes it easier just to uh, to restart it so let me make sure that I can see everyone and here I am in three two and one go alrighty everyone's comments let me just make sure that I can see all of your comments on uh, Facebook and then uh, and then we'll get started um, because we have a fun thing to do today. Let's see, today is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. Uh, we're still sheltering in place, social distancing, whatever it is you like to call what's going around our world right now. But it's, you know, this really is the highlight of my day for, uh, to see all of you guys. I know that you can see me and I can see all of you out there in my mind, uh, for sure. Um, let me just make sure I put that on live chat so I can see everyone's comments. There we go. Um, and, um, so, you know, I, I, uh, was doing these last week at 7.30 a.m., and Chris and I thought, you know what, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a break, start them at 8.30 in the morning, gives us some time to come in, um, we re-sanitize the office, we kind of get everything ready uh, for orders for the day and everything, and maybe 8.30 is a little more of a civilized time, gives me a chance to pour a second cup of coffee. So I hope that you... Um, are having some coffee or some lunch, or if you're watching this in the evening, perhaps you're having an adult beverage. Uh, I know that once in a while I <laughs> rely on adult beverage uh, during this time. Um, I can see that Gita is over on our Facebook feed right over there. So hello to Gita across the miles for you. And I know Janice will be um, jumping on um, over on the YouTube feed if she can. She's um, Janice is juggling a lot, you know, she's dealing with our vendors and doing all that kind of stuff. So we're all working really hard on, uh, with his skeleton crew right here. As usual, it's just Chris and I here in the office. We've been here in the office for over a week, um, on our own. So, so far we're good. We're healthy. We're staying our social distance. Um, your orders are still going out. Um, we're keeping, we're protecting this environment um, as uh, clean and as sanitary as is possible. You can tell when I do my uh, nodding, you'll see my, my dishpan hands, but instead I like to call it my hand sanitizer hands, but that's okay. We'll get back to the manicurist soon enough. Um, I know that a lot of you have just had a shelter in place order or a or a um, social distancing order kind of it's kind of coming in all over the US and I know in some other parts of the world. We've been doing that here in the Bay Area for over a week. Um and you know, it's it's not bad. It uh really gives you some time to slow down and reflect, craft. Um, and really make some mindful choices. So I know like right at the beginning, it seems super terrifying, like, oh my God, I'm never gonna leave my house again. But you know, just 
look to what your county or state ordinances are listen to you know your your local and state government um and you know we'll get through this um things are already you know they're feeling a little bit better i'm feeling a little less you know tired a little less fatigued um i heard this morning you know talking about your physical well-being and your mental well-being and so when times get dark, when you wake up at three in the morning and your start, your thoughts start to race, just take a moment and relax. Keep off of social media for that moment and just ground yourself. If you need to get up, make yourself a cup of tea or whatever, do it. But you guys, it's already March 24th and we're gonna slowly come out of this and by summer, the streets will be singing again. So just, Everybody relax. I know um, I know it's rough, but we're here to help you pass a little bit of time. So let me take another um, drink of my gin, I mean coffee, and <laughs> let's get started. Janice Kang is saying it's, <coughs> pardon me, I, it's not the virus. I just drank my coffee too quickly. Don't worry. Uh, Janice says, it's just one week plus nine hours <laughs> that we've been inside here in the Bay Area. Okay, so maybe you're counting the hours, Janice, but it's really okay. So, um, plus you should see, you guys, I cleaned my pantry. It is so clean this weekend, and Chris and I took the time to clean all of the fridge. So, heck, my house is as clean as it's been in years, so that's a good thing. Okay, so let's take a look and see what um, what we're gonna um, what we're gonna look at today. So, um, you know, I've been working on several different projects during this time. I'm I'm gonna grab them real quick. I put them. I should have had them a little more ready, but I have them under here like my Julia Child cooking show. So you guys know that we've been working on. So I'm just gonna keep rotating projects through you guys. It's like a a, a, a continuing saga of uh, you know of of what I'm going to be doing. So, here's this. Uh here is the um peyote stitch ring that I've got, right? Oh, and it looks was I actually I hope I wasn't. Maybe I was. When was I actually broadcasting earlier? It's a pretty good thing I wasn't swearing to myself then. Um it looked like we had another short stream, but I didn't realize I got to be careful. It's a good thing I wasn't muttering to myself. Hopefully I was I was behaving myself. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one if, if I see it. But anyway, um so this is the ring that I've been doing, the peyote stitch ring. Some of you guys have been posting on the bead table, um, and they're gorge. They're just super, super gorgeous. So um, I, I'm going to get back to this. I promise I will, but I'm going to put this underneath. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I did not mean to go, uh, to go live. So <laughs> oops. Well, what are you going to do? It's the, it's the blooper reel. What are you going to do? And then I also have this guy, right? Uh, this guy you remember, um, it's the, it's the wire centerpiece thing. And this one has really been ruminating in my head. So I actually think I know what I'm going to do next with this. So you guys are just going to have to wait. This is going to be a cliffhanger for a little bit later this week. But you guys remember that one and then with these pieces. And the tornado earrings, you know what, I wore them home, the ones that I did. Um, I've worn them home and I haven't actually brought them back, so I'll have to bring them back so I can show you. But this, uh, this is shaping up, so I'm going to let it simmer just a little bit longer. 
Um, and then uh, and then we'll we'll um, we'll take a look at it. Oh, Kara's on. Kara, it's great to see you text or communicate over there on the Facebook. Kara is saying, at least I didn't take my phone into the bathroom like one gal did in a Zoom meeting. I know we need to be really careful, don't we? <laughs> Where we take all of our portable uh, all of our portables, right? So. I did promise you today my favorite knot. And so let me go over here. I've got some things. I've got another um, another uh, project that I'm kind of letting simmer. And, and I think you guys are really seeing a, whoops, let me see if I can get this straight, that you guys are really seeing kind of um, a snapshot into my thought process because um, when I'm making projects for all of these, um, uh, what do I wanna say, for all of these different broadcasts, I work on projects kind of simultaneously all at the same time. So you'll be able, you kind of see my thought process, how it goes, okay? So this one, um, I think I'm going to, um, uh, do this as a wrap, as a wrap bracelet, okay? And that uh, button knot, the Chinese button knot, is going to um, feature kind of prominently in that. The Chinese button knot was um, one of the first knots I learned after um, silk wrapping at beadshop.com when we were a brick and mortar store in Palo Alto. So if, um, so it's one that's near and dear to my heart. And I've done a couple of broadcasts with it already, but um, right now, you guys, we got nothing but time, right? So it's a great way to practice, practice, practice until you get this knot down. So we're gonna talk about the knot today, and then I'm gonna talk about the other materials that I pulled for it. Essentially, well, let me let me tell you what I pulled, and then and then we can go to the knot. Um, just and I know a lot of these are familiar. Um, I still have my work table. I have not kind of cleaned my work table up from what I've been doing this week. So I'm um, I'm kind of using some of the things I've had. But we've got these circle uh, circles of bronze right here. All right, we've got the I, uh, the I Ching coin. We've got these serpentine donuts that have nice large holes, which I like, and I just grab them. They come in a lot of different kind of shades of green, but those are the three I grabbed. I grabbed, this is gonna be a riff on Kate's Favorite. If you know Kate's Favorite, uh, the bracelet that I've made with the shadows, and it's the one that I wear all the time. Um, I'm really digging it. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna incorporate these guys. Um, this is the uh, medium round and round. I haven't used this in a project in a while, and I've been filling since I've been filling orders. I see a lot of you getting it, so I'm like, shoot, I'm gonna use that sucker. So I've got that, and then the Padres, the blue green. You can use Padres of any color, but these are the ones that I had open, so I'm gonna use them. I have a little remnant. I think this is country red in the wax linen, though you can use rust or whatever. I don't even know if I'm gonna use it, but I threw it in there. And then I have some distressed, you can either use distressed mahogany or distressed brown. I think in one millimeter, I'm not gonna use it yet, but I just put it here. But today, what I'm gonna tie the knot with and use the basis with is my all time, all time, all time favorite leather, which is the Distressed Gray. You can use it in the 1.5 or the two millimeter. And I think this is the two, but the 1.5 would work just fine. Yeah, if Janice doesn't, doesn't jump on the live feed, she's meeting actually with Drea and Karen today because they're the ones who are keeping kind of the back end of the website and everything running. So up oh, there, and Janice just jumped on. I just saw her. So there she is over on, um, on the YouTube feed. So uh, let me show you though the start of the knot, okay? And the knot, um, it's called the Chinese button knot and I love it. Didi's asking what I consider that a maroon red. This one, Didi, this, 
this distressed, um, I think it's distressed, you know what, I grabbed it off the wall. It's either distressed mahogany or distressed brown. They're kind of close. You know, when you click on our leathers on the, um, on the website, on beadshop.com, you can sort by color, okay? So uh, try and sort by color and then you'll see things that kind of, um, that kind of uh, fall into that category. So, um, so it's either distressed mahogany or distressed brown will also work, okay? Uh, someone's asking me the length um, I'm pulling from your scratch, Cara. You still know your colors, Cara. Cara's saying this is distressed mahogany. Perfect. Cara's go Cara, get back in there. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you stay home when shelter in place. Um, so I don't know how long is this piece. I grabbed it out of the bag and it looked right. So I'll measure it for you. How does that sound? Uh, this one this one I'm going through it's about two yards 60 inches so a little less than two yards is what I grabbed out of it so but don't worry um, whatever make sure that you have at least a yard because you could always add to this but I think two yards is probably about right okay so to start I'm gonna use like a disc I could also connect it directly to this clasp um, or a button or, or something some way that you're gonna close this because this is eventually gonna be a wrap okay what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my button knot connect to this I Ching coin over here then I'll have stuff to ladder with over here and then I'm gonna do that trails end kind of hoopla. You know how we do that loop and then we silk wrap it. But I thought maybe, I don't know, I put some of these beads in. I, I don't know, I'm not there yet, so I'm not thinking about that part. All I'm thinking about right now is conquering the button knot and putting it through either a button, a disc or a clasp with a loop okay so I found the center of my cord here and I'm gonna go I'm, I'm gonna repeat this several times I know some of you have attempted the button knot Janice Kang I'm looking at you and have um, uh, achieved great things with the button knot um, but it's gonna take a little bit of practice so this is all I'm gonna show you guys today so you can take this in all right, so let me get a little bit tighter here, just a little. And now I found the center of my cord, okay, like this. Oh, I see Brittany's over on the feed as well. Brittany, it's good to see you as well. So this, okay, so here I've put my disc in the center. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie this kind of slowly you'll see what it looks like and then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to do it a couple more times. So if you have cord with you, don't do this yet. Don't do it with me, right? Just watch me do this first and then we'll get to that part, okay? So I'm right-handed, so I do most of the tying with my right hand and most of the holding with my left hand, okay? So with my left hand, I have my index finger and I put my index finger in between the cords. So I have a front cord and a behind cord. Now, the thing that I want you to remember is we always work from behind, from the back. This will help you remember. So I'm just gonna talk you through it, then I'll talk you through it again. Okay, so just everybody take a deep breath and chill. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do this. So here, I'm going to take this cord from behind, I'm gonna make a loop, and I'm gonna twist that loop. See what that looks like there? Now I've made a little window out of this loop and I'm placing that window on the top of my cord. Okay, can you see that there? 
Now I'm going to put my thumb of my left hand on all of that. Now again, I'm going to reach from behind, not the cord I made the loop with, but with the second cord. And let's take a look at the window that I have here. Okay? There's a cord running through the window. I'm going to weave through the window. So I go into the window, under the cord, and out of the window. And what that should give you is a knot that looks kind of like a pretzel. Okay? We're halfway there. That's halfway. Simple, right? Now, the cord that I continue to use, okay, the one that I wove, I'm going to bring it around. This is the part that I call making the ears, okay? I come around, I go behind this cord that's uh, coming down from the bottom and see this diamond in the center? I go up the diamond. Now I never touch that cord again. That's done. Okay? Now I switch cords. I go behind, right? So I grab this cord that I haven't touched, right? Behind that cord all the way. See where this cord is coming up on this side? I bring it up through that diamond window again and pull it. So see how I've got a cord coming up here, a cord coming down here, the original knot that I tied, and these two little ears on the side. Okay? That's it. Now we just have to tighten. So watch what I do to tighten here. I grab on these two cords and I pull it tight. And if it's a little loose, see how I've got a little loose spot right there? Just means you have to walk the knot down. So watch how I walk it. I choose an end because I want this knot to end up over here. Okay? So I'm going to choose an end and I'm going to kind of push on it. Push, push. See how that loop is coming up? So I grab onto that loop and pull up the slack there. Okay? Now, this side, that loop now, I turn it and I push the loop, push, push. Tighten up the slack there. Turn it over, find where that big loop is, right? Push, push. There's the slack. Turn it, push, push. And this should be that center. Okay, so now we have completed the knot. Okay, let me do it again. I'm going to push, put, put this one aside. I have another piece of cord. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter this time so I have a little bit less cord to work with and I'm going to put it through one of these circles of bronze. Whoops, let me get a little bigger, a little wider. All right, so let's do this again. And you can, for this video, you guys, these vid this video will be archived in two places. It's archived on our Facebook page, our business Facebook page under videos, or better yet, go to our YouTube channel, right? And if you go to our YouTube channel, and you go to, I have this in a playlist, it's called Creative Connections with Kate, um, and you can watch it again and again and again, okay? So give our um, YouTube channel a follow. That would be awesome if you would do that. Um, then you'll be notified every time we're on. Um, and again, if you just go to the channel, I've made playlists of some of the important things that we do, like the Free Tip Fridays and, and Bead Shop Lives that we'll be getting back to eventually when things normal out. Um, also, some of our basics are also in a playlist, but there's a playlist called Kate's Creative Connections, and, uh, and you'll find it there. So don't worry, you'll be able to watch it again and again. 
This is called a Chinese button knot is the, is the term. So let me do it again. <clears throat> so we can do it with a small thing here, right? My left hand, okay, comes in and splits the cord. Now, we make a loop and where, which cord do we, uh, do we pull from you guys, right? We always pull from behind, right? Okay, so here's the cord. If I'm looking at it straight on like this, this is the cord that's in front this is the cord that's behind. So I take the cord that's from behind and I make a loop and as I make that loop I twist it. So see what that looks like there? Okay. Now all I do is I place this loop on that cord so now it's a little window. All right. Now, if you look at the cords down here, if I can kind of move my hand so you can see this, see how my finger is just right on that connection, okay? And if I were looking at this, the cord that I just made the loop with, now this is in front, okay? So I take the cord now from, I reach my hand under, from behind. I grab it, and let's look at that window. What do I do with the window? I bring the cord around and underneath, so it's mirroring that loop. And now what do I do? I weave in the window, under that center, up and out the window, and I tighten, and, it, and it's done. Now, if you just kind of tighten it up, if you get to this point and you don't have this little pretzel looking dealio, then it's wrong. You've got to try it again. Okay. Now I continue to use the cord. This is the cord I just wove with, right? So I continue with that cord. Let's identify this uh, diamond shape that's in the center. So I grab this cord. What do I do? I go behind the cord that's coming out of the knot, right? From underneath and up through that diamond and I've made the little ear. And that's it, that side is done. Now I just have to mimic it with the other cord. So I reach under the cord I just used, grab this cord from behind, bring it, you have to bring it all the way to the other side. Some people like to just put it right here. That's not right. You have to cross that line of the other cord, put it underneath and up through that diamond. And what you do on one side, you do on the other. So see how that looks like it's at opposite ends, right? Okay. So now I've made both of my ears. Now, I'm gonna pull it tight. If you have rat tail or some kind of satin cord, it might be easier to do to practice this with those cords because it's a little more slippery, a little more slick, so it'll be easier for you to do it. But if you only have leather, that's good too, okay? So I'm going to now tighten. Grab the two cords that are coming out, and as I pull these cords forward, I'm gonna pull my index finger away. Okay, and that tightens it up. Let's tighten up the slack now. Okay. So, just choose. Doesn't doesn't matter. I could choose this side to 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 tighten the slack or this side. Doesn't matter. Choose one. And I I do the tightening. I switch over so I do the pushing and tightening with my um right hand. So I choose a side, here's the side. I'm going to kind of I'm going to push it, push push push. Push push push. And maybe don't make this initial pull so super tight um like I did. Push push push. There it is. Can you see it? 
Can you see this move? Once you see that move, push it a little bit more. Once you see that move, pull it tight, walk it down. Okay. Now I flip it over and I go to the opposite end of that loop. Push, 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 because I want to keep tightening in the same direction. Okay. Push, push, push. There it is. So push it all in. And there's, there's the loop. Keep walking that loop. Push, push, push. There you go. It's there. Almost home. Push, push, push. There it is to walk it. Now this final one I can tell is this cord right here. So pull it tight. Kind of give it a little bit of love with your fingers. Pull the cords and pull this one. Okay. So there are your two button knots. That's it. Watch this video over and over, right? So remember that it is the things you want to remember. You always want to work from the cord that's in back. That's special. This is when people, when people get confused. This is the step. What they do is they try and make the knot with the front and see how it's not catching anything. So always remember from behind, grab that one from behind, make the loop and twist it and set it on your cord there so you have that little window. That's where people really get confused. Then from behind, I'm going to do this at Kate speed, from behind, whoops, from behind and weave through the window, in and out, done. Check that you have the pretzel. Beautiful. Continue with that same cord. Bring it around and behind, up through the diamond, and you're done. Switch cords, grab from behind, bring it around, and bring it exactly in the opposite place, bypassing this cord, and up. Check that you have the ears that are symmetrical, like this. You've got your pretzel, and Tighten it up. Okay, and if it's not quite, see how that one's a little bit big there, but it will, um, as you tighten, it will take up the slack. Okay, and so we'll just take up the slack right here and turn it and take it here and turn it and take it here. Yeah, it's the loop and the twist. That first step is the crucial one. And just you decide. It doesn't, you know, leave, leave some, it doesn't have to be super tight. You'll find the tension, okay? And then you can continue on. Like, so I've done this one. You can do it again, right? So I'm going to do another loop. I'm going to make a loop, put it on the cord, pull it from behind. So you can make these in a row around from behind up through the diamond window. That creates the ear on my left. Bring the cord around up through the diamond window and it creates the ear on my right and pull it tight. Okay, so now I have two in a row. Okay, you could put a few beads or something on here if you wanted. All right, and again, from behind, loop, twist that loop on the cord so you make the window, weave in and out of the window, and around to make the ear, up through the diamond window, around to make the second ear, from behind and up, 
and there's your third one okay it's a good question um uh Dawn is asking, does this not shorten both tails at the same at each stage? That's a really good question. I have just knotted these three in short succession. And you can see that one tail is a little bit longer than the other. So, but if you use plenty, okay, um, you can, um, uh, you'll have enough to work with. And Janice, I'm not sure what you mean doing this on a single cord. I mean, if the single cord is here and you bring it around, you need you need a cord coming from the front and the back, right? And so now, since this is already knotted and stuff, I can't do the weaving. So you need to, um, you know, have that cord in the front and in the back. All right, so um, so that's it. So um, so next, does the cord that does all the work say the stay the same throughout? I don't know. That's a great question. Let's um, let me um, do this here real quick. I'm gonna color this thread, and I'll tell you. Do I have a plastic baggie here? This is kind of a baggie. Let me, I'm just going to draw on this cord. We'll see what happens there. It's a great question because I don't really know the answer to that. There we go. Okay. This might come off on my hands, but you know I don't have perfect hands right now anyway. So there we go. Okay, so here's kind of my black cord. doesn't show that much, but we'll be able to see that. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to put this cord that I colored, the black in front, and so here, making my loop, putting it through the window, and can you see the black cord is in the back now, is, is in the window. Now I grab that cord still now that so I switch it so the black cord does this weaving in through the window like this but then I'm done with this one that has the black on it now I go to the one that doesn't uh, no whoops I lied sorry I continue with that cord that has the black on it bring it around from the back up through the diamond and now I'm done with it okay so the clear cord, the one that I didn't put the black marker on, just comes around and goes underneath and through. So it looks like I've used, even though it looks like you use that one working cord a lot, you use about half and half, I think. Okay, that's it. Um, and then you, you tighten. Now, to really show off, and I have some leather in here, and I think you've seen me do this before. You could do this with two, and then I'll sign off because I've got orders to, to fill, you guys. Uh, so I'm going to do it with a dark cord and a light cord here. Yeah, Janice, I remember you did post a photo of the two cords together. So let me just show you. It'll be something for you guys to practice for those of you who are adventurous. Okay, so let me clip these. I have some extra leather here. And again, I think it's both this mahogany and then the gray. Let me put it in a um, another one of these just so it has a... A thing. So when you're tying this with two cords, you're doubling your angst a little bit, but you can do it, okay? You want to keep everything as flat as you can. So watch when I make my loop, okay? I'm going to make my loop from behind. I make the loop and notice how the 
gray is inside, okay, like this, and goes through the window, okay? Now, the cords that I pick up from the other side, the left, I'm pe keeping them flat, okay? And I'm gonna weave one at a time. So I'm gonna weave this gray one first, make sure it's flat, can you see that? under there. Now I'm just going to follow suit with this mahogany one and it goes to the outside so nothing's twisted. Now take a look. Can you see how nothing's twisted there? Right? So now we're just going to continue. I'll take the one from the inside, bring it behind, up through the diamond, then follow suit with the red, but bring it around the outside so it sits nicely next to, does not cross. Okay, and really check it, make sure that it's not twisted. There you go. Okay, so we're almost home. See how nice and flat that looks? Now, here, we're going to go behind and up there's the second ear and we're going to go next to it from behind and up make sure it's not too tight get that back out there so everything is sitting flat. Can you see that? Nothing is twisty. Okay, now I'm going to pull very gently and you kind of have to kind of have to tighten as it goes. And then you just tighten everything up. Okay, so I'll start with my my this one and just keep them as flat as you can as you're walking them through so they don't twist. There it is, there's that one, and there's that one. I'm going to have to walk that one a little bit more. And you know what, Jackie, I think you were right. See this here? See how I have this little opening? When I went around that first time, I think I went in front and I didn't go behind, so I have this, this business. So I just take it out again and redo it. Sometimes when I go slowly and explain, um, I screw up, right? I still screw up on this. I'm just going to do this twisty, making sure it's on the inside. There we go. Put that on the window from behind and weave. Two is a challenge, but you can do it. This one I think wants to go on the inside. But check your work at the pretzel stage which is coming up right here. There we go. You can see if the pretzel stage isn't correct, you know you have to redo it, okay? So now from behind, behind, there it goes and up through the diamond and around and from behind 
and up through the diamond. There we go. Make sure it's not twisted. There we go, that looks right. And we'll do the same thing, this guy, from behind and up. From behind and up. Make sure they're laying nicely. And a two color one is definitely easier to tie with rat tail. Yep, and see how I can see it already, how it's gonna close correctly. Yep, there we go. And we just have to push all of these guys in so they're nice and even. That's it. So I recommend you guys, I know that you've got a lot of time on your hands right now because we that's the state of our world. Um, know that this too shall pass. Um, we'll come out of it, I think, a more mindful, appreciative group that does not take any day at all for granted. I know I won't. Okay, there we go. And so here's this guy. Let me just lay these out so you can see them. And tomorrow, tomorrow's adventure, I think what we'll do is, um, I'm gonna take this guy. Mimi was asking for a little sneak peek. So it may change because, you know, sometimes when I let it simmer, I change things a little bit, right? Is this guy, I'm going to make some kind of a trails end component, I think, over here that will go to this round and round. I think over here, I'm going to start some laddering with, whoops, I just dropped my beads all over the table. Let me pick those up right there. And I think I'm going to, I don't know, I need to decide if I'm going to do traditional laddering, like I know Brittany is rooting for, or, um, or Infinity Stitch. We'll see. We'll see how thread forward I want this to be. I also grabbed a couple of these um, serpentine donuts, which I love, so I'll see if I can incorporate those. Okay, so we'll see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a photo of this actually right now so I can send it to Drea so I don't forget, and plus the lighting's pretty good right now, <laughs> right here. Let me, so this is the this is the photo you'll see online and on the blog as she writes it. Um, and uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay. So let me move this over so I can see all of you all. All right. So um, hang in there, kids. We're all in this together. It's going to happen. You know, social distancing really, really is working. We have been in social distancing here uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area for, as Janice Kang says, one week and nine hours. And it's really starting to work. You know, um, they're comparing it with other, you know, curves around the world. And while the virus is still happening here in the Bay Area, it's going to slow and slow and slow. So the more that you isolate, the more that you take advantage of doing things like this, connecting online, picking up the phone, staying off social media 100% of the time, turn off the news, give yourself a small time of news to watch. Don't have the news on 24-7. You know, Watch an old movie. Dust off your DVRs. I bet you have a, a DVD player at home that and a stash of DVDs that you haven't watched in a long time. I know that you have a pile of books or a pile of craft books that you want to read. Go outside, take a walk around the block with social dis distancing. Get some air and get some sun. You know, my brother, I'm going to tear up a little bit now. My brother is on the front lines. He is a truck driver and he is driving 
um, supplies all over uh, the state of California. And he's not afraid. He's um, practicing hygiene, the right hygiene, and he knows what to do, and he's sanitizing his truck, and he's out there, you know, and our doctors and our nurses and the people that help, they're out there. So those of you who are lucky enough to be sheltered in your homes and to be on your own, though I know it's really hard right now, you can do it. You know, think good thoughts for those people who are outside, who are working for us, who, you guys, when the summer comes, we're going to be back out there. We're going to be able to sit in restaurants again. We're going to be able to sit on a sidewalk cafe and have a cup of coffee and watch people watch their walk their dogs and watch kids screaming down the street and doing all those things. So hang in there. We're going to be okay. We're fine so far here, thanks to the team that are not on site, who are working hard behind the scenes. Um, Janice is working real hard, and Karen's working real hard, and Drea's working real hard. So be real patient with us if you do have questions. Don't hesitate to reach out on social media. Um, best way to get a response that's fast is emailing Drea directly, info.beadshop at gmail.com, um, or just info at beadshop.com, and she'll get back to you as quick as she's able. Chris and I are packing those orders. Um, I've got a special little message in there, special little sticker. They don't look quite as pretty as they do when we have a little more leisure time to wrap your packages a little more orderly. But rest assured, we're still getting beads in, we're sanitizing, we're making sure that everything is safe here. So that being said, I miss you guys. And but I will see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. I'm going to cry in my coffee for just a second, then get back in there and uh, get those orders done. So love you guys. Thank you so much for your support of our small business. I'll click onto this just so you know. Follow our newsletters, right? And jump on and get um, our newsletters are the best way to stay informed uh from bead shop um and you never know i just gave, did a five thousand um giveaway you know we did a giveaway to our uh we just celebrated five thousand people over on our bead table okay so you never know what's going to come down who knows i get so bored <laughs> we never know what we're going to do but my dear friends Stay safe. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30 Pacific time for the continuing saga of the stuff that's going on on Kate's bead table. See you then. Stay safe. Stay positive. We got this. Talk to you soon.